There are five poetry books in the Old Testament. And of those five, there is an incredible father and son duo. So that is the book of Psalms and the book of Proverbs. The father and son duo is none other than David and his son Solomon. So when we look at these poetry books, they reveal God's character and they contain some of the greatest wisdom that we could ever know. Important that God's character is unchanging because that creates the foundation for our lives. It took me a long time to get to read those books properly. And although I was vaguely familiar with them, it was only when I really started spending consistent time with those books that it started to make a real difference in my understanding of God's character and creating a foundation that I could use. And I want to encourage you on this journey as we walk together in life, spend some time with these poetry books. It's divine poetry that reveals God's character to us and that it becomes part of our foundation and our thinking. And here's the reason why it's important. Because life is complicated and people are complex. So complicated and complex might sound the same, but they're very different. So something that is complicated means that it is difficult to understand. It has lots of different components to it, and it takes layers and layers and layers to actually get your head around it. But it follows a set of rules. So you can predict the outcomes. You can sort of anticipate what's going to happen, even though it might be difficult to understand. Once you get to know it, you can predict where it's going. Something that is complex is not the same. Something that is complex is not that it's difficult to understand, it's more that it is unpredictable. So you could understand all of the components. You could know exactly what if this happens, then that's supposed to happen. But when it's complex, well, what is supposed to happen doesn't happen. And that's where people come in. Because people are just a little bit different. People are not just complicated because there are lots of components to understand, but people are also complex in that they are unpredictable. And what that means is that we have to adjust our approach. Because if that is the reality, that life is complicated and people are complex, well then we can't approach life as if it's not complicated. It's going to create expectations that are never going to be realized. You're going to be left disappointed and bewildered. So when we look at, we might want life to be just easy. It never is. Life requires effort. And that's mostly because there are so many different components to your life, just your life. We're not talking about the world and all the different systems. It's just your life. Your life consists of the physical, the mental, the emotional, the spiritual, the relational, the occupational, the recreational. Each of those has its own different set of complicated things that come with it. So how are we then supposed to look at life in a simplistic way when it has so many different parts? If we can see that, yes, life is complicated, and if we're going to approach it in a simplistic way, we are almost guaranteed that the outcome is not going to be good. Then you have to add in to this complicated life a whole lot of complex people, including ourselves. And with complex people, well, what happens is one day it's going to be like this then the next day it's going to be completely different. It's the same set of rules. It's the same environment, the same circumstances, but now the outcome is completely different because you can't approach all people the same way. So different people need different approaches. But here's the kicker. You can't even approach the same person the same 
way all the time. In one instance, it might be, I don't like oats. The next day, it's, please, could you make some oats for me? What happened? Well, I changed my mind. Okay, how can I predict that? I can't. So if, if that's what we are faced with, well, then we can be so grateful that God has a solution for this, for this complicated world filled with complex people. And that is because he has given wisdom, which is an art. So as an art form, it's not scientific where it has an approach. So I have a theory, then I'm going to put it to the test. I'm going to experiment and I'm going to check what the results are. And then I'm going to repeat this until I can repeat it and I can get the same result every single time. That is not how life works. So as an art form, what happens is I have to be able to navigate and move and change. And I have to take things into account as they change. And then I have to be happy to change my approach. So when I look at wisdom, and I have a, a key verse from the book of Proverbs. So when God addresses life and its complexity with its people, what he does is he says, I'm not going to approach this in a scientific way. I'm going to approach it like art so that there can be different shades. There can be different nuances. There can be the same underlying guiding principles, but a different picture every single time. Because wisdom is not just knowing. Wisdom is knowing what. So it's not just that I have all the information, I have the answers. It's knowing what answer I need. And here's the key point. It's knowing what when. It's knowing the right thing at the right time. Then I can start working out, okay, in this instance, even though the setting is the same, it needs a different approach because I want a different result. So this proverb was one that I spent a lot of time not understanding for a very long time. And it, I really struggled and I didn't want to go and do the research. I wanted to spend time in the book of Proverbs and after reading it, I don't know how many times, I eventually listened to something, not intentionally, but he addressed this exact proverb in Proverbs 26 verses 4 and 5 and then it made sense. And I love the way that it's put one verse after the other. So Proverbs 26 verse 4 says, do not answer a fool according to his folly unless you you would also be like him. And then I get it. Um, it makes sense. So if somebody's being foolish, don't go and join in his foolery and try and answer him in that situation because then when two fools are arguing, well, then you're both fools. If you're going to argue with a fool, that's what's going to happen. But the very next proverb says, answer a fool according to his folly unless he is wise in his own eyes. And I'm like, but what must I do? So I know I am sometimes a very black and white kind of person where it's just give me the clear instruction. I want to know and then I will follow it. And then I get here yeah, and I'm like, okay, now I don't know what to do. So don't answer a fool unless you like him. Next one, answer a fool. Otherwise, he's going to think he's wise. And that's what wisdom is. It's not just knowing. It's knowing what, when. Because there is a certain time where you do need to answer. And there is a time that you shouldn't. And wisdom is knowing the difference. So if I can see that wisdom is going to be that approach, then I get to realize that God is the artist who starts bringing all of this together. Because if the world is complicated and people are complex, well, God is infinitely complicated. He is so beyond our understanding. It's not, that, it's not that I don't know everything about him. It's that I can't even know everything about him. And although I say that God is complicated, meaning that you're never going to get to know him completely, it doesn't mean that God is complex. And that's the beautiful part. Because with God... 
you can expect consistency all the time. So he is going to be the same. His character is never going to change. When you tie those two together, it's good news and it's good news. It's good news because it's lifelong learning. That you are always going to be growing in your relationship and in your understanding of who God is and of his character. And it's always going to be good. But it's also good news that he is not complex because that gives us a secure foundation. And that means that we can build our lives and our identity on something that is not going to change. And when we have those two components and we can take these two things, then we can see that God has given us lifelong learning and he has given us absolute security. If that becomes the framework of the art that is going to fill that picture, well, then it's a whole different approach. Because now I can see that God has revealed himself through creation and he has revealed himself through Christ who is literally God in the flesh, who is the word of God. He is wisdom personified. But God has also written it down for us so that we can go and reference his word. And when we speak about those books of poetry, the Psalms and the Proverbs, the father and son duo, well, this is what it's, the scriptures say about David. It says that David, who's the author of the Psalms, that he was a man after God's own heart. And when you read the Psalms, you'll see that it is literally David pouring out his heart. So if the Psalms is the outpouring of David's heart, and David's heart is a heart that is after God's heart, which means that David also wanted the things that God wanted, well, then we have an outpouring of God's heart in the Psalms. There are 150 Psalms, some incredibly short, just a few verses and some incredibly long. But I want to encourage you to go and spend consistent time with the Psalms. Just make it a regular thing to read some of the Psalms. Get a, a reading plan on version, or just start at the beginning and read through it over a few months. But I also want to encourage you to read Proverbs because if the Psalms are going to give us the heart of God and show us his character in such a beautiful way, well, Proverbs is the book of wisdom because it's written by Solomon and Solomon was divinely gifted with more wisdom than anybody else. And the book of Proverbs is what he essentially wrote down. So as you spend time in the book of Proverbs, it's going to give you layers and layers and layers of thinking. It's going to create little categories where you can start seeing certain characteristics, where you can start seeing how certain circumstances are going to lead to certain things. And it's going to help tremendously with understanding a complicated world. There are 31 chapters in Proverbs. It's one a day for every day of the month. With both the Psalms and the Proverbs, if you can read through them consistently, and as you read them, something is going to come up. Something is going to be highlighted. Something is going to jump out and make sense to you. Not all of it, because there's a lot of it, but something is. And when that happens, well, that's the moment you want to highlight, you want to underline, you want to extract that, write it down. Then you want to make it visible so that you can have that repeated all the time. Because I think it's just part of our human nature. These things take long to sink in. And it takes even longer to get them out once they are in. So you have to remind yourself of it all the time. Sticky notes. Put something on the fridge. Put a reminder in your phone for some random time later in the week. And when it goes off, you're like, what is, oh yes, I remember now that proverb, that psalm, share it. When you share it, how nice. If you shared it consistently on social media, you'd get memories years later of that thing that was so important back then. And as you spend more and more and more time in God's word like that, and specifically understanding the poetry books of psalms and proverbs, 
Well, essentially what's going to happen is you're going to cement the foundation of God's character within your life. And when that is cemented and it brings security to you, it's going to allow you to approach complicated things in life with patience because you're going to have a greater understanding. It's also going to allow you to have perseverance, not just patience, but patience is this is taking long and it's not happening the way I wanted to. Perseverance is that did not happen the way I wanted to. Like that was bad, but I'm going to try again. And why do we have perseverance? Because when God's character is the foundation, well, then what happens is I'm not hinging my identity on it. I'm not relying on the outcome so that I can have well-being. The outcome is secondary. So whether it works or whether it doesn't work, okay, well, I'm going to learn and God is going to use this. And maybe there's something that he needs to reveal to me that I can't see right now, but so I can persevere. What's beautiful is it's not just the complicated world then that we have a different approach to, but it's also with the people in our lives, the complex people, because we're not going to expect simple and straightforward because complexity is not a difficulty. When we can see that complexity, having an unknown outcome, is what also creates interest. It's also what draws us closer and creates intimacy. And ultimately, well, that's what God is interested in. He's interested in us, not just knowing the answers and not getting everything right all the time. He's interested in us growing and learning, growing closer to Him and growing closer to others. And you know what complexity does? Complexity invites empathy and understanding. And that is what brings us closer in our relationships. So when God is the divine artist of life, and when we are spending time with His poetry, well then we get to see that God is never changing and we are ever learning. And that is a great way for God to be able to paint the story of our lives. So there are 31 chapters in the book of Proverbs and there just so happens to be 31 days in the month of October. So we are starting a Bible reading plan and we are inviting you to join with us on the YouVersion app. So the links are in the description of this video so that you can download the app and then join the reading plan. Every single day we will read one chapter of Proverbs. It's a beautiful way for us to be able to engage. There's a comment section and you don't have to comment, but I will be reading with you and we can all join together and go through the book of Proverbs for the month of October. It's a good way to kickstart that habit and I can guarantee you, you're going to find those nuggets of wisdom. It's beautiful because God says, if you want wisdom, you know how to find it. Just ask him. And he has given you such an incredible, beautiful book filled with his wisdom. And I look forward to reading it with you. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and His greatness is unsearchable. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and His mercy is over all that He has made. And the Lord is near to all who call on Him, to all who call on Him in truth. He fulfills the desire of those who fear Him, he also hears their cry and saves them.